I want all the campus pastors to come up here right away, would you? Come on up here. So Jim has already shared with you the results of the weekend. And uh, first of all, I want to thank all of you that are prayer warriors. You interceded, you went to the Father on behalf of this most important weekend. And uh, we, by the way, everybody knows this, I think you know this, but all the planning, all the preparing in the world cannot make up for the presence of the Holy Spirit. It's the Spirit that draws you to Christ. It's the Spirit that convinces people of their sins, convinces them that Jesus is Messiah. And so prayer is, is vital. It's, pr it's prayer. Prayer changes everything. And uh, so I, I want to take just a moment to, to just really say how, how uh, honored I am to have these uh, pastors these campus pastors this last weekend, I, it was a, a new experience for me, to be honest with you, and Lydia and I both, and, and, but to see what God did through you campus pastors is just nothing short of remarkable. And I got to see it from a, a new perspective, which was fun, and, uh, but to see how God used you. Now, Joe, I was afraid you were going to fall off that ladder. I have to be honest. <laughs> you, a little scary um, to see what's happening at, at TC our, our terrace campus you know Lori and, and, and Bart you guys are just leading so well and uh, they had 200 and how many? 248 248 and <laughs> and I mean if you walk into that campus it is just like it's just so good, and it's, it's so good. And uh, Bart obviously brings some energy with him. Uh, Jim and Camilla at this campus, I watched you Sunday, and of course, it was a personal thing with me because, you know, I, I'm dad, pops. But uh, to watch you guys operate in your calling and gifting and anointing, good night. It was just, I snuck in at the 1030 service way back there, and I popped in from somewhere. I don't know where I was at, but anyways, I, I went to the Spanish campus, and then I popped in here, stood in the back, and this place was just jammed. Out there, they had like, I don't know, 70, 80 people, and, and it was full. And I stood here and watched Jim just give this wonderful talk and bringing people to the cross. And uh, uh, Delano, by the way, you know, they've had 20 to 25 people showing up on a regular basis out there because it's just getting started. They had, uh, they had 49 on Sunday. <laughs> and to see what God's doing, I, I just wanted to say to all the, pa and, and Pastor Hector and Gladys, they had just a full house over at the Spanish uh, campus with uh, Terrace Campus. And then, and then here, Eric, gosh, well, I don't know how many, 603 show up in our Spanish campus here at the Southwest. And, uh, and just to think, 10 years ago, all of this was just a dream in our hearts. And, and, and what we said was, lost people matter to God. And we were doing four services and maxing out everything. We had a facility paid for, debt-free. I was killing myself. Thank you, Lydia. <laughs> Thank you. Ushers, ushers, there's somebody down front you need to pay attention to. But the Lord said to us a very clear word that as long as there's one lost person in Kern County, we cannot stop growing. Because it's not about numbers. It's about souls. It's about heaven and hell. It really is about changed lives, but changed eternities. And so, you know, all of a sudden we have this vision of multiplication and now Sunday we had six pastors joining with me and sharing the good news. Instead of one guy leading a single campus, we had six different pastors leading six different campuses. And oh, by the way, fast forward from 10 years ago to now and we're looking at about 2,500 more people showed up this Sunday versus 10 years ago. 
and more people getting saved, lives changed. So I, I just want to honor you guys and thank you. Um, I want to thank all of your people who work with you. Because here's the truth. As great as they are, they know this too. They're not that good. <laughs> they're great, but they're not that good. <laughs> they have to have, I know they do, because I, I do. I'm Mr. Magoo. I have to have a lot of people around me helping me. And all of you volunteers, you servant leaders of our church, uh, you served this last weekend. I want you to stand up right now, please. Don't be afraid. Don't be embarrassed. Just please, if you served this last weekend in any capacity, I want you to stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Come on, I want you to honor the heroes. Maybe see. All right, guys. See ya. The reason why God blessed us this last weekend was, one, because of his favor on this house. And we don't take that for granted. It's by grace. By grace. Um, it's because of the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. But it's also because, and this is what I want to talk to you about for a few minutes this evening. It's about how God uses flawed people. God doesn't use perfect people. Is that good news? Look to the fr friend beside you, even if you don't know them, tell them, say, that's good news because you're not perfect. That's good news because you're not perfect. <laughs> you may think you are, but you're not perfect. So I want to help you feel better about yourself tonight. Here's the takeaway. By the end of our time together, here's what I believe is going to happen. Some of you who have not gotten in the game yet to be used by God, you're going to want to get in the game. Some of you that have been serving and, you know, you're, you're leading in some capacity, but there's just this limit because you think, I've got to get this act together before God can really use me. When I get it all together, then God can use me. Before you leave here tonight, I think you're going to leave here with a new hope and a word from the Lord. So here, here's the word. Um, as I mentioned, these pastors and I, uh, we recognize that we are imperfect people. What happens Sunday and Saturday didn't happen because you have perfect pastors or because you have perfect whatever. There's no such thing. As long as we're in this flesh, we're flawed people. How many of you need a Savior every day? Not just on Sunday, not just one time in your life. Je I need Jesus to save me every day. So, I think of what God's done in 30 years. Uh, this year, again, we're going to be celebrating 30 years at New Life. And I think of our journey and the crazy stuff we've done here, which a lot of the experts would say, oh, it can't be done, it can't be done. And we just did it because Jesus said. But, but here's what I want you to know. We've done a whole lot more that's failed here than, than, has, than has succeeded. We believe that the pathway to success is paved with failure. Many times it's three steps forward and two steps back. And I wish somebody would have told me this. I'm not kidding you. So if you're like under 25 or under 30, some of you really need to hear this because you've got it in your head that one of these days, one of these days God can use me. I wish somebody would have told me this when I was a young man. God is not waiting for you to get your act together before he uses you. He's just waiting for you to get surrendered. And say, Lord, yes, I'll do anything you want me to do. I'll serve you in any capacity. Yeah, I've got some failures in my past, but Lord, I want you to use me anyways. So Sunday morning, um, I got up early, and I'm reading through Luke chapter 9. And if you brought your Bibles, you can turn there. I'm reading through Luke chapter 9, and Jesus just shows me this that I'm going to share with you for the next few minutes. How the God used 12 men who were anything but all together. They weren't the shiny penny. They weren't the uh, pick of the litter. They were really a jacked up crew. And Jesus chose them. 
And what I want you to catch is this, that God, again, is looking for you just to bring your full self to him, and he will use you. Now, and I think it's ironic the Lord gave me this word on Sunday morning, and I wrote the devotional, and I wrote my prayer, because then what Jesus did that day, he just reminded me that he did it through very imperfect people. People just saying, Lord, I want you to use me. That's what happened on Sunday. That's what happened Saturday. So Luke, uh, Luke chapter 9. I'm just going to walk you through this just real quick. Jesus is sending out his 12. Now, who are the 12? The 12 were the foundation of the early church. So as these 12 goes, so goes the early church. The 12 are so important to God that he literally is engraving their names, 12 of them, in the 12 foundations of the new Jerusalem city. The heavenly city that we'll, we will live in forever and ever and ever, right? That city, there's 12 foundations and one name for each apostle is written, engraved forever. That's a pretty high honor. God must have thought pretty highly of these guys, right? They must be really together, right? So here, let me just, I'm going to walk you through this. They start off good. Verse 1. When Jesus had called the 12 together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and cure diseases, and he sent them out to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And then it says later in that passage, that's what they did. They went out there, and they're healing the sick, and they're casting out demons, and they're, 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 they're just making an impact in all of that region. Starting off good, right? Good day. But then, the very next part of this, Jesus is feeding, uh, excuse me, he's preaching to, to thousands of people and they're hungry and, and the disciples said, watch what they say. You ready for this? The same ones who are driving out demons and healing the sick and all full of faith a few days before this. Now, they're saying, Jesus, send them away because we don't have enough food for them to eat. So, so just send them away. Wow. And Jesus turns around and he says to them, verse 13, he replied, you give them something to eat. These guys become so small-minded and self-absorbed that they are now just, hey, you just we don't want to take care of them. And yet Jesus says, okay, and in fact, they say, no, well, we just have a few fish and a few barley loaves, and, and Jesus, okay, just bring them here and shut up. And he blesses it, breaks it, and it. he feeds all the people, right? And I know by this time, Jesus got to be going, oh, my gosh. You know, like parents do with kids at, on some days? What am I going to do with these guys? They're driving me crazy. But then a good day happens because in the next section, Jesus is asking them, who do men say that I am? Oh, some say you're Elijah. Some say you're John the Baptist. But then, then Jesus said, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered, the Christ of God. Christ means anointed one. The anointed one. You are the anointed one of God. And Jesus said, hey, you know, flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you. That was, that was from heaven. Good job, Peter. Good boy. Good day. But then just a few uh, days later, about eight days later, verse 28, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, and they, they went up to this mountain to pray. And so we, we went to this mountain just a few weeks ago when we were in Israel, in the Mount of Transfiguration. And all of a sudden, Jesus is standing there and his appearance, appearance begins to change because of the glory of God, the brightness of God's presence. And, and there appears with Jesus, Elijah and Moses. Now, you, to be Jewish, you, you would get this. You got Moses standing in your presence? This is like Big Mo. This is like the guy, the representative of the law. And then you have Elijah. Elijah is one of the greatest prophets. He represented the prophets. So here's the represent representatives of the law and the prophets standing right there and Peter, James, and John are doing what? Sleeping. They have this nasty habit of falling to sleep on Jesus when he needed him the most. He needed them the most. So he, you know, the guys wake up and they look and there's Jesus standing with, with Elijah and Moses and they're like, oh my gosh. 
What a moment, right? Verse 33, as the men were leaving Jesus, Peter said to him, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us put three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. In other words, we're going to worship all three of you. Oh, Peter. And I love this next phrase. After he said that, he says, he did not know what he was saying. Duh. Peter was always sticking his foot in his mouth. Here was going to be the first leader of the church, the main dude that's going to leave the church, right? And what is he doing? He's always opening his mouth, inserting foot. Now, don't raise your hand, but any of you here relate to Peter. God can't use me because, man, you, not, you will not believe the stuff I say. It says he didn't know what he was saying. Yep, I can relate to that, James. God couldn't use me because, you know, I just, I just say dumb things. So Father God wants to get their attention when Pete's saying, hey, let's just have three tabernacles and worship. A voice came from the cloud saying, this is my son whom I have chosen. Listen to him. Don't you be worshiping Elijah. Don't you be worshiping Moses. Oh, by the way, don't you be worshiping Pastor James or Pastor Jim or Pastor Joe or anybody else. Why? Because we're just like you. The Father says, you don't worship a man, you worship the man, Jesus Christ. God says, here's my son, you listen to him. Then you're never disappointed. So many people get disappointed when a man or a woman of God fall. They do something stupid. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that. Why? You had that person on a pedestal where they did not belong. I'm not talking about people practicing sin. That's not what I'm talking about. That's what I love about this church family. Pastors are not expected to be the perfect little pastor. They're expected to be a pastor that loves God and is in a journey just like you and keeping it real. Okay, so now they go down off of the, the Mount of Transfiguration, and the first thing that happens is a father comes running up to Jesus and says, Hey, my boy has a demon. The demon gets a hold of him and tries to throw him into the fire. And I brought this little boy to your disciples, your disciples that you trained up, Jesus. And they couldn't cast out the demon. This time Jesus is getting pretty wore out. Verse 41, Jesus says, Oh, believing and perverse generation, how long shall I stay with you and put up with you? Bring your son to me. Who is he saying that to? He was saying it to his disciples. There's times I'm sure Jesus gets frustrated with me. I know, in fact, I know he does. <laughs> About every Monday, Jesus gets frustrated with me. It's my Elijah day. I go into my cave, do not disturb me, I'll be out tomorrow. So Jesus heals the boy, casts out the demon. Watch this. Verse 43. While everyone was marveling at all this, Jesus said, they were marveling at all that Jesus did. He said to his disciples, listen carefully to what I'm, what I'm about to tell you. The Son of Man is going to be betrayed in the hands of men. Watch this. But they did not understand what this meant. It was hidden from them, so they did not grasp it, and they were afraid to ask him about it. Boys, you're killing me. Are you really that spiritually dense? Yes. And they were afraid just to ask a question. Hey, Jesus, what did you mean by that? These were going to be the guys leading the church. Okay, I'm just about done, but you got to see this. The next thing. This is the very next thing that happens. An argument started out among the disciples as to which of them would be the greatest. Oh my gosh, who gets to be the big L leader so everybody will follow them? Who of the 12 gets to be the big cheese that the other 11 have to obey? Who's the greatest? That is nothing but pride. Who gets to be the big guy? And then next, verse 49, Master said, John, 
We saw a man driving out demons in your name and we tried to stop him because he is not one of us. He's not a part of our denomination. So we tried to stop him. He's not a part of New Life Church, so we tried to stop him. He's not a part of our Christian club. So we tried to stop him. Can you imagine about this time what Jesus is thinking? Like, Father, can I start all over again? The next thing, this is the last thing I'll show you. These guys were racist. Yeah? Mm Mm-hmm. They start going to Jerusalem, and they need to go through a Samaritan village. They try to go there, and the people reject them. Verse 54, when the disciples, James and John, sons of thunder, my boys are James, and my name is James, you're right, sorry. When the disciples, James and John, saw this, they asked, Lord, do you, watch this, do you want us to call fire from heaven to destroy them? But Jesus turned and rebuked them. I think about this time, Jesus is, you know, can I get a Xanax or something? I mean, I, these guys are driving me crazy. Did you hear what they just said? They said, because they are Samaritans, they're not of our kind. We're talking about ethnicity because the Samaritans were part Jewish, but they're part something else, so therefore, they're not one of our kind. And James and John, the sons of thunder, say, Lord, can we just call fire out of the sky and scorch them? Okay, now, here's, here's where I want you to now insert yourself. Most of you here aren't as bad as they were. True? I mean, that's just one chapter, guys. I can give you more. But here's what I want you to catch. Jesus spent three years investing in these 12 men. One turned out to be a devil. And they had to replace him with Matthias. After Jesus spent three years with them. But at the end of this journey... Jesus said, you guys tag, you're it. I'm leaving. And you're going to begin this new thing called the way, the church, the called out ones. And they were baptized with the Holy Spirit. And all of those guys were transformed into leaders that literally shook the world till today there are over 2 billion Christ followers on this planet right now And it began with 12 knuckleheads. I I want you to get this, because I felt it deep in my heart. I, I, I don't know how to convey it to you any deeper than I am right now. So may the Holy Spirit make up the difference. I really feel that tonight is a call to us to recommit ourselves to serving Jesus in his church, his causes in the earth. It may be here on a campus somewhere. It may be out in the community. But I feel like there's some of you here tonight that's a recommitment to saying yes to Jesus with the rest of your life on earth. To serve him. For some of you, I I, I feel this strongly. That's why the Lord gave me this word. But he's saying to you, you've you've just kind of sat on the back burner and you just had it in your heart, I can't really be used by God because of my limitations, my weaknesses, my, my past, or, or, you know, I'm not as skilled, or I'm not as whatever. You know, I don't talk good. Remember Peter, Mr. Foot and Mouth. And for those of you that are feeling in your heart tonight this, this burning to say yes to this call of Jesus to you, to his church, to be used by him, to to use all of your life. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to challenge you to move in response. We were singing it earlier. I I hear, what's, no, 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 before about the army rising up. There's an army rising up. And as we're singing this, that's the picture in my head 
was that tonight the army is being raised up. That God's going to use you in ways that you can't even dream right now to make a difference in your world. And it won't be because you're so awesome. I think you're awesome. But if I talk to somebody close to you, they'd probably say, their awesomeness is not quite what you think it is. (laughs) Just ask Lydia and you'll understand what I mean. But here's what I want you to get. Yeah, you've got some strengths, but you've got some weaknesses. But I've found that a lot of times God wants to use your weaknesses more than your strengths. Because guess who's going to get the glory then? So I feel this. Tonight is the night for some of you, really for the first time, to say yes to this call. And I'm going to ask you right now, those of you that, there's going to be two groups I'm going to pray with. But for those of you, maybe for the first time, you've really, you're ready to step out and say, God, use me, use me. Use me whatever way you want in my life. Take my life, all of it. My past, present, future, all of it, Lord, and use it for your glory, whatever that means. And give God a blank check. If that's you, I want you to stand up right now. I just want you to stand up. This is your night to say yes to the call of God. This is a special moment for you. I grew up with this this teaching. In fact, I was telling Jim, I wish I could sing one of those old songs to you that we used to sing. Lord, take my life, all of me. And as a little boy, I was singing those songs to God. God, take me, use me, mold me, make me, shape me. As a, as a young boy who stuttered when he talked, I was, didn't like crowds. And yet I just said, Lord, use me. And at 17 years old, 40 years ago this month, I said yes to a call. And I'm not saying you're going to be a pastor or a preacher, so don't let me freak you out. But you might be. Let's bow our heads. Spirit of Jesus. Fill this room, fill our hearts. Holy Spirit, come now and ignite holy passion within the hearts of those that are standing right now and a belief that they can be used by you to bring healing to broken hearts, to those that have wandered away from Father's house, to those who are struggling in their faith, to whatever that may be for them, I pray that your spirit right now would just ignite that passion to be used by you. And I want you all of you that are standing to say this from your heart, just say, Jesus, I'm saying yes to you tonight. Yes to your plans. Yes to your purposes. Use me. For those of you that, and those of you that are standing, remain standing for just a second. For those of you that tonight this ignited something in you to move to a new level of serving God, of being used in your giftedness. Maybe for some of you it's this word of, you know, you don't have to get good enough in order to be used by God. But tonight's your recommitment, a, re, a recommitment to saying yes to Jesus, to serve him with the days that you have on earth and whatever his plans are. If that is you, I want you to stand right now and I want to pray with you. We're going to join our hearts together. Stand up. Spirit of Jesus, thank you for what you've done in our hearts tonight. Thank you for the fire of your spirit that has been relit in our hearts to be used by you. Father, I pray for those that are standing right now that are saying, I'm recommitting myself to God's plans and purposes. God, I want to be used by you. No matter what my weaknesses or my flaws are, I want to be used by you. Father, I pray that right now something will be released of heaven in their soul. Come, Holy Spirit. 
And from this group, there will be raised up prophetic voices. There will be missionaries across town, but maybe across the world. There will be people that are willing to go into a prison or, or will go to the hospital and visit the sick or whatever it may be. We're just saying, yes, Lord, use me. Use me. I want you to tell the Lord in your own words now, I want you to say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, I want to be used by you. God, I want to be your hand extended to the world. In the name of Jesus, I bind the works of the evil one. I come against the lies of the devil that would tell some people here because of their flaws or their weaknesses or their propensities that they cannot be used by you. Father, would you come now and break off those chains? Break off those chains now, those lies, and may it be replaced by the truth that God, you use people that are surrendered to you, people that love you and just want to be used by you. Father, break us free from any limitations that keep us stuck. In Jesus' name, release it now. Let's all stand up all over the room, please. Let's join hands. Everybody look up here just one second. I want to just talk to you for a second. God says to you tonight, your father, your Abba, your Papa says to you tonight, I love you. I'm crazy about you. And I don't use you and use your life because you're trying to achieve my good pleasure or my approval. I, I use you because I delight over you. But I love you. And as long as you're on this earth, whether you've got another day to live or you've got another 50 years to live on this planet, God says there's breath in your body. There's breath in your lungs right now. And as long as you have life, God says, your creator says, I put you on earth for a purpose. And like it says of David, it's, it says, and David served his generation, then he died. Listen up. God's calling you to serve your generation. When your day's done, it's done. You go home to be with God. And listen, we're going to party. Big party. But between now and then, we've got some work to do. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, come now. I pray, God, that from tonight there would be birthed visions and dreams. Visions and dreams of what this brother, this sister can do. That tonight the glass ceiling is being shattered in Jesus' name. That glass ceiling is being shattered right now. Lord, I pray that your sons and your daughters will believe with all their being that, God, you put me on earth. You created me. You created me just the way that I am so that I can make a difference in my world. So, God, right now, right now, just breathe fresh on us. Fill us anew with the Holy Spirit. You said that in the last days, you would pour out your Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters are going to prophesy. Both the men and the women will speak the word of the Lord. The old men would dream dreams and young men would have visions. Father, I pray that right now there would be a release of visions and dreams and prophetic insight. Thank you, Father. And I thank you, Jesus, that one day in heaven, when we stand before you, you will reward us for just doing our best. For the times we, we fell down and we stumbled and we made a mistake and made a bad choice, but we got back up and tried again. That's what you're going to reward us for, that we didn't stay down. And just like those apostles are going to have their names etched in the 12 foundations of the heavenly city, so God, one day, 
you will reward us in heaven. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joys of heaven. So, Father, we submit ourselves to you, surrender ourselves to you. Thank you for our brothers and our sisters tonight, but what you did here was profound and very pointed in our lives. Thank you for the visitation of your Holy Spirit. We receive this with gladness in our hearts. In Jesus' strong name, and God's people said, amen, amen. I want you to give the Lord the biggest ovation of the night. Come on. Jesus, it's about you. It's about you, Jesus. We want to make you famous. We want to make you famous, Jesus.